Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we are going to be reviewing Stony Brook's Quantitative Finance Masters, and a little bit of a hint to the PhD here as well. Um, for those of you that don't know, I review quantitative finance programs. I'll put a link below to my more or less fancy quant honorable mentions. Uh, these are programs I think are just absolutely excellent. I take the time to review them, such as this program today with Stony Brook. Um, I go through the rigor of the material being taught. I look at the career placement. Um, anyways, there's a list, I'll put a link below, that ranks out the programs I think are the best. Um, they have provided information, so I call them ranked programs. Um, they're not actually ranked, they're just programs I think are excellent. And then there's a list of non-ranked programs in the sense that they are good programs, I think, given the information that's online, but they have not provided me special insight such as Stony Brook has provided me. So this is by invitation only. I hand select programs I think that are going to be good. And if they make the cut, they make this list. Uh, if I ask them for materials and it's not a good program, I just don't tell you which ones we don't rank. So without further ado, let's dive on in here to Stony Brook. Stony Brook has to be one of the most underranked programs and we'll talk a little bit about why I think that is. So for those of you that don't know, Robert Frey is one of the founders of this program, the director of the program, I believe. He's kind of involved in it. So Stan is one of the, I think is the director of the program now. Robert Frey is still involved. Anyways, uh, Robert is from Renaissance. He's one of the kind of the core members of that organization. So for those of you that don't know, Renaissance Technologies is one of the most exclusive profitable hedge funds that are quantitative finance focused. They are very, very secretive. Um, but they are involved here in Stony Brook's program. So on one hand, I think a lot of people assume Stony Brook is good because of that. And I think on the other hand, people are discounting the program saying, well, you just have a few famous people that are involved in the program and they don't seem to get ranked well in the other rankings. Um, and why is that? Why are they not being ranked well in other rankings? And this comes down solely to the fact that they don't provide data around uh, job employment. So I look at this, I consider this, even though it was not provided, I don't have hard statistics on where they are placing the students um, in a specific year, which I'll talk about the career placement here at the end. Um, this essentially knocks them out of all of the rankings. And it's really unfortunate that this is how the program more or less has been ranked and treated by the other rankings. So let's dive on in here though to the core courses because I think this is where a lot of the program uh, strengths are at here. So the core courses are going to be introduction to probability, uh, analytical methods for applied mathematics and statistics. This class I absolutely love. Um, one of the textbooks for this class, I actually went out and purchased. So I purchased a bunch of textbooks, I read textbooks, and this is part of the review, right? I can't determine how good the program is without looking at the material that's being taught. Um, and often this comes from the textbooks they're teaching from, and many of the programs also provide which chapters are being covered. So it gives me a little bit of an insight here. Uh, anyways, this course uses uh, linear algebra and its applications by Gilbert Strang, or Gil Strang as he goes by. One of the best. Uh, there was an interview a little bit ago here um, with David Shimko from NYU. He mentioned one of the biggest weaknesses we see in quantitative finance students is not enough linear algebra. So the fact that uh, Stony Brook's program here is covering that, and this class also has an advanced textbook in, in uh, calculus as well with applications. I think this class specifically is one of those classes that most programs are actually missing here. So some linear algebra, some advanced calculus, putting it all together. Um, again, applied mathematics and statistics. Um, again, other courses in here is foundations of quantitative finance, portfolio theory, financial derivatives and stochastic calculus, computational finance, quantitative risk management, advanced stochastic models, risk assessment, and portfolio optimization. This is the core. Uh, all of these topics, for me at least, some of these are a little more specialized, um, but these are the things that are gonna make the core foundation for quantitative finance as a whole. Uh, some of the other books I actually personally own and review and have used that is part of this list here is going to be the two Stephen Shreve's books. So this is Stochastic Calculus, uh, finance. This is the first book. It's on like binomial asset pricing. The second book is going to be uh, Stephen Shreve's Stochastic Calculus 2, Continuous Time Models. So again, these two books are in most quant finance programs. A book I have not seen in any other program, which makes me a little bit happy. Uh, we'll do a book review on it eventually. Uh, is quantitative risk management concepts, techniques, and tools here. Uh, this continually pops up as a recommendation for me uh, on Amazon. 
I think it is a bit market heavy focused here. So what I mean by this is the market buy side. Uh, again, it covers things like credit risk and whatnot, but it seems to be more or less on the buy side. So I work on the sell side. I have not seen a really good sell side book on this, but this I think is a good start, a good approach. I've been reading through this book as well. Uh, most programs are not covering actual quantitative risk management, which is like the newest cutting edge piece of all of quantitative finance. Um, and then finally, the other book that I have that I purchased so I can review this program uh, is Investment Sciences by David G. Uh, Lawnberger, I believe that's how it's pronounced here. So this is another excellent text here. Again, a little bit more finance focused, a little more application focused. Um, but you should notice here with these textbooks, some of these textbooks are going to be just general like math and stats textbooks. And then some of these are going to be applied to the industry, like the quantitative finance book uh, on risk management here, um, these stochastic calculus books by Shreve, uh, and again, this investment sciences book here. So you're getting a good balance here of math, statistics applied to uh, financial applications, more or less in a quantitative, quantitative finance realm. Uh, next are going to be the electives. So you select four electives here. There was a long list. I'm not going to just like churn all these through for you guys, but you can go on their website and look. I'll put a link below if you're more interested in this program. Um, these were my recommendations. These are just my opinions, classes I saw that just stood out that I was really excited to see here. But my favorites are going to be mathematics, a high frequency finance. So if you're interested in HFT, high frequency trading and whatnot, this would be a really interesting class to take very specific if you're wanting to into that job or kind of that area of quant finance. Uh, numerical analysis, there was a one, a two, and a three. So three separate classes on numerical analysis, which is very, very useful to have. Uh, a time series course, which again, I see a lot of people teaching, but since this one's more math and finance focused, I think this program specifically uh, would teach this much better. So good thing I like. Regression theory. This is not taught at most programs. Most programs I do not feel like put enough emphasis on regression. And then you end up in the, the industry here and shock. Uh, we don't trash regression because regression is absolutely critical. There is linear and nonlinear regression if you're not certain of how this works. Uh, but re regression theory, I think would be an absolutely amazing course to take as well. It'll really prepare you for almost all areas of quantitative finance. Um, other classes, again, is going to be simulation and modeling. I do this in my job, my day job now. Uh, statistical learning. So again, a rigorous statistical approach to machine learning. Um, principles of parallel computing. Again, this would be a really interesting class if you're wanting to end up more on the quant dev side. So optimizing runtimes, working with parallel computing. You can see though from all of these courses here, they're all quantitative. They're not fluffy like, ooh, capital markets and bonds and pricing and whatnot. This is actually hands-on rigorous quantitative finance here. Again, some of these are gonna be focused in very specific areas, uh, like the high frequency finance course in the principles of parallel computing, but they are giving you the good rigorous electives here that you can kind of build up a solid foundation and somewhat specialize into a specific area. And that leads me to the program basics here. So what? is kind of the basic structure of this. It is three semesters, eight core courses, and four electives here. So 12 courses in total. I like this. Many of you know I love two-year programs. This is a year and a half. Uh, but it is much, much better than those out there that are a year. You just can't learn enough in a year. Uh, a year and a half, again, is... I think it's a little short, but this is one of the better programs. Uh, again, the materials, the topics being covered are excellent. And then being able to do this in a year and a half... Again, it's just better than doing a one-year program, which is why it stands out from other programs. Uh, research projects are tied into the classes themselves. So one of the questions I ask programs is, are your students doing actual research or research projects of any sorts? Um, a lot of programs separate just a research class. I think Stony Brook stands out in the fact that they're trying to tie these into the coursework themselves. So you're not just like taking a bunch of courses and then at the very end doing a project. Um, you're actually doing projects tied into a few of the classes. I think there's like two classes, maybe three, uh, where you're doing projects alongside the work itself. So you're kind of building and learning as you go. I just think this is a better approach. There are no GRE requirements as of now, so they got rid of it, I believe, during COVID, so no exams are required. Uh, the cost of it, though, is very, very cheap. So if you're a New York resident, so in New York State, it is $21,000 for the three semesters for the tuition. Um, for non-residents, it is $39,000. 
That is extremely cheap. Uh, if you're not familiar, I went to the University of Michigan. It was like 77,000 is what I paid for mine. Most masters, I believe, are between like 70 and like 100-ish. So 39,000 is a really good value, especially since you're getting a really high rigorous education here. Uh, cohort size, so how many students come in per class is 70. The average class size, meaning the actual classes you are taking, will have between 10 and 110, where the average is going to be 25. As we know from all the research out there, smaller class sizes often lead to more involvement and interaction with professors, which leads to better learning and education. Um, so a class size of 25, I think, is a perfect size here. You should get some really good hands-on experience with the professors as well. Um, number of industry practitioners involved in this program is two. Uh, the student undergraduate degrees that typically feed into this master's program is going to be math, stats, uh, IOE, industrial, operational engineering, and other quantitative fields there. So they are optimal. If you're a business student, this program is not going to be for you. Uh, but again, they are coming in here at a very rigorous level. They're trying to get students to have a strong foundation in math and stats and engineering, quantitative fields, and then building on top of that to make you a mastery level or a PhD level if you go through the PhD program here. Uh, the program has five areas that they specialize in. So you can pick one of these five tracks here. There's modeling and risk management and finance. This is where I work. This is, I think, an awesome area to be in. They have some uniqueness in the fact that they have a quantitative risk management course, as we mentioned before, that everyone's going to take. Uh, there is a track on machine learning and big data. So if you want to go more into the data science machine learning realm, they have a specialization for you in that area. I believe that parallel computing elective would be perfect in this track. Uh, there's a stochastic calculus optimization and operational research. This is more focused on the traditional financial engineering application, so stochastic calculus optimization. Um, and again, operations research typically historically has been tied into the financial engineering side as well. So if you're wanting to work more with derivative products here, be a little bit more math heavy, um, this would be a good area to kind of go in if you want to enhance your math focus and get a career doing more math. And then finally, computational methods and algorithms. So Again, you have these nice five areas here. There are pros and cons to different ones. And that leads me to this next slide here with the strengths here. I just wanted to mention this as well. There are going to be research seminars that are tied into this. So as we're talking about, you know, these five areas of focus, often most of us jump into quant finance having one single track idea of what this is. These seminars, though, are going to be presentations from PhD students. They bring in industry practitioners as well. And you're going to get a good amount of learning and see different perspectives of the industry as you go here. So this will help you kind of pick and select which area you want to focus in, which gives you a good real life feel of this. Stony Brook is also located in Long Island, New York uh, State, which is just outside of New York City here. So it's a little bit of a commute. It's not like you're gonna be running on the weekends to go hang out in New York City as much because you're gonna be busy studying, but you're close enough that you can do interviews, uh, network opportunities, meet professionals, practitioners, you know. So I think this is an excellent case in the fact that it's close to New York City, and it also has these seminars to bring in kind of top-notch industry practitioners, as well as PhD uh, research projects. Uh, another highlight, I think, of this program, which I have not seen of other programs, is they participate in strategic partnership uh, for industrial resurgence, which is SPIR, it covers 50% of your internship costs. This is excellent. Uh, for those of you that don't know, many students that come into these quant programs are international. Um, some come from really wealthy families. They're often, though, many of us, including myself, who's in the US, but we didn't have a lot of money to pay for internships, especially like unpaid ones. And there's always costs associated with it. And it's always a challenge here. Uh, this program though helps you cover some of those costs that internship, which is absolutely amazing. And then finally, this is one of the only programs in the country that offers a PhD in quantitative finance. I would highly recommend it if you're wanting to go to the PhD route. PhDs offer more rigor, but they take more time. So there's always a trade-off between a master's and a PhD. Um, given the core courses I've been seeing for the master's program here, I think you'll be well prepared with a PhD in quantitative finance, and it will probably be much more focused as well as keeping that academic rigor to it uh, for getting a PhD. I often see many PhDs that are specialized in other areas like statistics or mathematics. Uh, and while they're adjacent to quant finance, they might not be very specialized in quantitative finance, which is one of the drawbacks of a PhD here. I think their PhD though would be a really good choice if you're wanting to get a PhD instead of a master's because it offers a good rigorous background as we can kind of see here at the master's program. Um, 
but they're also located again near New York City and you have specialization within quantitative finance. So something else to consider, which I think is a strength of this program. Uh, the biggest weakness though is going to be the career resources exist. However, they could be use a person who more, works more closely with these students in the networks here. And what do I mean by this? Some programs have amazing staff that just work with collecting student resumes, working on interviews and all that. They do have resources. So they do have a program that's part of the university that you use and it helps prepare you for interviews. Uh, and that's great. But when we compare this program to other programs, some of these other programs have a dedicated quant finance only person to do that. So this is kind of the downside. They are super rigorous, well-taught industry practitioners, a lot of good learning and education going on. Very, very happy on that end. Um, again, they have some career resources. They are located close to New York City. So they are really good in that sense that you can actually network and work on your own. But that being said, if they had just an existing person that just focused on this, I know it's expensive programs, but you know, it would be good to have that. It would just make it a little bit stronger and have higher job placement. Again, I have actually recruited from Stony Brook and the program has been extremely helpful. So Stony Brook has been the most helpful program I have run into when I am recruiting, meaning I am hiring. Uh, I reach out to many programs. They just give me like a list of resumes or they just fire it out and say, hey, students, if you're interested in this job posting, uh, just apply. I want like you know, hands-on, like which students are really good? And, you know, can you help me find someone to fit these specific characteristics? Um, Stony Brook takes a really solid interest in their students and they're able to provide me feedback on these students are going to be a great fit. Um, they make the connection for you. It's more like a networking opportunity where you can network with these students and get contacts here. So Stony Brook doesn't have the official person here for career development, which I'd like to see. However, they've been absolutely amazing to work with um, when I've been recruiting. So I will be making Stony Brook one of my target schools in the sense that they're going to be one of the first places I stop to look for good hires. Because again, the program is absolutely amazing. Um, good academics, good course structure. The students I have talked to as well. So what you don't see on this, I email a few students and alumni to see what they think of the program, what they like, what they dislike. Um, the students have been great. I run into their students at conferences as well. They've been very uh, intellectual in the sense they ask insightful questions. So they start to really understand the industry better. Uh, they can have deeper conversations, which many program students are nice, but they just don't have as many insightful questions here. So overall, I absolutely love Stony Brook's program. This is probably one of the closest programs, if not the closest program here, when you look at the coursework to what I would actually design here. So I made a video before on what I think would be the best quant program. Maybe I'll link it below as well. But I think they are actually the closest program here to what I would design and structure. So I think they well prepare you on the foundation to make you well prepared for quant finance in different areas. And they also seem to be underrated. Like I get it. They don't provide all these numbers and metrics on salaries and you know job placement rates and all this. But this is one of the things I absolutely dislike about QuantNet and Risk.net. They spend way too much time on you know nitpicking numbers and like, oh, job placement wise, this program has slightly more than the other one. Uh, I think Stony Brook has pretty good job placement from looking at it. Um, again, I'll place the list below. They've placed students at a ton of different institutions and programs over the years. Uh, many of these are extremely, you know, well-established, well-respected quant finance firms. So they get the math badge as well, which I'll put up here. Every program gets a badge that their specialty is. I think Stony Brook has just a really excellent curriculum. Again, it's probably one of the best out there. And I think their focus again is on math and stats, which makes their students very, very lucrative to hire here because they will be well-prepared, which means you'll require less training on the job. So anyways, that's my review. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And as always, until next time.